Excuse me. I want to know who's responsible. Excuse me. Excuse me. I want to know who's responsible. There you are. So you're saying you thought you had the vehicle in reverse. But it's your responsibility. It's your responsibility. You're responsible. You did it. It was you. He is. He don't understand. He's responsible. Hell hath no fury is a pregnant woman scorned. No, glad I didn't do it. <laughs> I believe there's a common case of a person not using their thinking skills. You would not believe the amount of change we get through the hurry uh -huh. train apprentices mm -hmm. and employers not being up to speed on regulations. <laughs> oh yeah, well, when's the last go. time you did an on site inspection? Clearly, this is the case, case of the not apprentice not being adequate to train responses. Please, 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 Thinking, oral communication. To solve this workplace accident, what we discover here today could affect future training for apprentices, workplace policy. Creating a safe work environment is critical for all employees, apprentices, and regular staff. Mm -hmm. You're correct. Go ahead, Yes. The employer, Jake, says he had all the safety rules posted in the shop. Mm -hmm. Yes, we saw the uh, Rosa safety sign posted next to the bed. The sign clearly states the safety tips for using automotive lift. I wonder if reading text or document use was a problem, a lack of comprehension or inability to locate information perhaps. Let's make a note and check on this. We also took a closer look at the stick shift and it was in fact in first gear, not in reverse as we've normally expected. The woman pushed the accelerator and the victim didn't stand a chance. So the woman isn't using her thinking skills and ditto for the victim. God rest his soul. I don't think it's necessary for me to be here any longer. Wait, wait a second. Wait a second. Watchdog represents a whole range of health and safety information. Look, we need to know if the safety information was communicated sufficiently and understood by the apprentices. And that is pertinent to this workplace accident. Of course we need you here. You know, contrary to most manual shifts, Volkswagen vehicles require the operator to shift in reverse where first gear is often located. The maneuver requires pushing down on the stick shift. This may have been counterintuitive for the apprentice if she lacked prior knowledge of this gear system and simply deferred to the more common manual shift system. It's clear she didn't take the time to evaluate and identify the operational system of the vehicle prior to taking action. Mm -hmm. A deficit in thinking skills. Like? John? John Satch? As Mr. Satch mentioned, the female apprentice driver was not using her thinking skills. But as we investigated further, we learned that she did not have prior knowledge to the Volkswagen stick shift. So, we questioned the employer, Jake Stark. Jake Stark? Jake Stark? Wasn't he the mechanic in the Scalato incident last year? Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. <laughs> Collendaire was unaware that when operating the stick shift in a Volkswagen, the driver must push down on the stick shift in order to put the car in reverse gear. Since she was an apprentice, 
The onus falls upon the employer to explain vehicle operational procedures and to ensure comprehension of this communication. Additional guidance should be provided to ensure apprentices understand the consequences of the failure to act appropriately when employing thinking skills. It would appear at the time of this incident, no one was responsible for guiding and monitoring this apprentice. Understanding, understanding your role when working with others is vital for employers with apprentices who act as mentors to provide on-the-job training to inform, demonstrate, and monitor how tasks are well, performed. I know that all of my apprentices are well versed in the gears of the Volkswagen, as opposed to other makes and models. Well, your apprentice signed a sworn statement saying otherwise. Miss Collender possessed entry level certification when she was hired as an apprentice. Certainly, there was an expectation on the part of my client that her education prepared her to manage the safety requirements of this vehicle. Now, perhaps those who oversee the apprenticeship and training process should have ensured that the apprentice was up to date in her knowledge of all vehicles. Is this not a reasonable assumption to make? Observe. Exhibit A. So thanks for meeting with us today. We just wanted to get some input from you on your journey on being an apprentice. And could you introduce yourself right now? I'm Scott Wilson. Awesome. Thanks, Scott, for meeting with us. So what year of apprenticeship are you in? I'm just starting up my third. Okay. And it's an auto mechanic is the what you're in? Yeah. Okay. I was wondering if you could tell us about your experience in school on the issue of safety training and what kind of safety training you received there? Well, in the, in the first year we took a couple weeks in the beginning to go over a kind of a general safety thing and get the WMIS certification. Mm -hmm. And uh, after that there's really been not uh, too much safety training at all. In the subsequent courses that you've taken? Okay. So how has it been at the shop? Um, do you find that you get safety training from your employer when you're over the last few years? Um, yeah, courses come up that are available and uh, sometimes they'll be sent off to go through those. So they support you to take those and who do you go to if you have an issue or concern about safety and how to do a new procedure? Um, I'm always willing to just go ask the boss. And he's been pretty good about talking to you, sharing with you. Yeah. Awesome. So how do you feel that this uh, relates to other provinces? Do you feel that across the country everybody gets the same amount of safety training when they're in school? Well, I think as far as I know that the, the time given for training is different per, per province. Okay. And um, I think BC is now cut down to six weeks. Okay, and what are the other provinces at, do you think? Uh, I think eight. And the safety was only touched on in the first year, not in your subsequent years? Yeah. Okay. So just to wrap up, is there anything additional that you'd like to say about safety and training for apprentices in the mechanics? Um, just that I think maybe a little extra training in school would probably be a good thing. Particularly with regard to safety, eh? Yeah. Okay, awesome. Well, thanks very much for meeting with us today. I rest my case. For God's sake, save the drama for the courtroom. Do you realize how hard that would be to monitor? Please. That would mean talking to every apprentice every minute of every day, of every week, and teaching every single vehicle operating system to each apprentice. There has to be some level of reason here. Do you think that is humanly possible? I think the roles and the responsibilities of the employer should be proud to question here. Listen, my client did his job, and now it's time to do yours. We designate these schools to teach a broad concept, and it is up to the employer to teach specifics. Uh-huh. And how many more people will have to die before okay. you start doing okay, the correctly? Okay, there are countless styles people. of vehicles out there. Not how many more people will have please. to lose their husbands? Look, please. This is far cry from leading by example. You know, working with others. Thank you. Zoro, could you please go and get Kyle and tell him we're ready for him? And Helena, would you stand up by the board and let's go through the nine essential skills? and do a process of elimination.
Now, we all know how important the nine essential skills are in the workplace. And initially, we identified reading text and document use as potential factors. Until we learned that our apprentice had excellent skills in these areas. And in fact, when questioned, had no difficulty locating and correctly interpreting information found on the safety regulations poster. Numeracy wasn't a factor, nor was writing, and there was no computerized equipment or use of computers involved. So that leaves oral communication, working with others, thinking skills, continuous learning, warranting further investigation. Ah, oh, Kyle, you're here. Well, ladies and gentlemen, now the main event. Kyle. What we have here is surveillance tape taken from the shop two days before the unfortunate accident. The tape deck is set on super long plays, so we're able to capture eight hours of footage. There are two cassette decks, so the employer is able to grab 16 hours of footage. The system is great, but when the tape completes its run, it automatically rewinds to the beginning and begins recording over the same tape. Yes, in a reference to what happened on the day in question, the employer, Jake, gave us the wrong tape. The tape from the day of the accident had been recorded over, but I grabbed that one from Jake anyways. That's a very good thing you did, because with technology today, we're able to extract footage from a tape that's been previously recorded. Sam will be bringing in the tape soon. So now this tape is from two days before the accident. Kyle, could you just fast forward it a little bit, please? You know, there, there. The tape clearly shows the apprentice in front of the hoist. Uh-huh, and you can see my client telling the apprentice to move. Ah, but watch more carefully. Kyle, just back it up a little bit. Yeah, your client motioned to the apprentice to move away from the front of the hoist, but he didn't explain to him why he needed to do so. You see, oral communication means a connection between giving and receiving information. Yeah, the apprentice needs to understand the instructions, but he also needs to know the safety consequences of his actions. The employer should have taken the time to advise the apprentice about why he shouldn't have been there in the first place. Okay, yes, but let's not forget about the lack of thinking skills on the part of the driver. Surely she can't be completely innocent in this case. Excuse me. I was just shuffling through my records, and it indicates that we sent an automotive lift safety tip sign to this shop well over a month ago. Mm -hmm. Yes, we actually do have a photo of this. But when I watched the video, I did not see it posted, or at least clearly posted. I know the video is choppy, but there is no sign of it at all. Kyle, can you please Kyle. rewind to that section of tape? Kyle, I have the just second. a second, Sam. We're just looking at something. No, I think you really want to see this. Yeah. Yeah, I, th I think I know what you're going to show us, but go ahead. Now, by a very sophisticated method, by the ad, it's not picture perfect, we were able to grab some frames from the previously recorded footage. Again, it's not picture perfect, but I think you'll get the picture. <laughs> Pause it right there, Sam. Now, if you look at that image and compare it with this one, you'll see that there's some kind of equipment that's been in front of that automotive safety sign. And I think if we look at this more closely, we'll find out that that's been covered for quite some time. you can, Jake Stark. You can start by having the right to remain silent. Anything you say can be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to have an attorney present now and during any future questioning. 
If you have, cannot afford an attorney, one will be appointed to you free of charge. You also have the right to know the nine essential skills. And by what took place here, you have plenty of study time when you're going. In fact, did we have the same conversation about a year ago? This incident demonstrates the broad range of factors that can occur in a workplace situation that will result in serious consequences. And in this particular incident, there were three individuals that played a contributing role. A victim, Josh, one of the apprentices, lacked thinking, oral communication, working with others, and continuous learning skills. As an apprentice, Josh's role is to actively engage in asking for clarification and information when it's needed. The driver of the Volkswagen on the hoist, our second apprentice, lacked the knowledge required to safely operate this vehicle's manual shift system. And ultimately, Jake, our employer, lacked effective oral communication, working with others and thinking skills. Clearly, he did not understand or fully appreciate his role as a mentor, a teacher and supervisor. In taking on apprentices, an employer agrees to participate in discussions about work processes, make suggestions on improvements, inform and demonstrate how tasks are performed, and provide feedback on that performance. Most importantly, it's the employer's responsibility to ensure that all staff adhere to workplace safety regulations and enforce these practices with all apprentices. Currently, apprentices are, for the most part, on their own to find help when they need it during the four-year training period. It's likely that only a few have debilitating learning problems. However, results of the survey and our experience indicate that many apprentices need more adequate essential skills than they currently have. Reading and remembering, taking notes, and setting out problems in mathematics are only some of the topics that could facilitate technical training. This situation seems to have come about not because of a lack of services, but through lack of coordinated focus on the responses tailored to the specifications set by the apprenticeship demands. The apprenticeship training systems across Canada currently accommodate almost 200,000 apprentices. With an impending skills shortage, we need to double our efforts to ensure success for those in the system and to attract well-prepared candidates in the future. This tragic incident on this episode of ESI can't be blamed on a single person or essential skill. Rarely do essential skills occur in isolation. Tasks and activities require individuals to call upon a number of essential skills in order to successfully and safely complete them. Investing in essential skills building has numerous advantages for both the employer and the employee. Employers profit from higher productivity, lower error rates, improved safety, and greater employee retention. Employees benefit from greater self-confidence, leading to promotion. And employees with stronger essential skills are usually more positive in the workplace and are generally healthy workers. Where do essential skills fit into your future? Oh.